This week in the Missouri Valley Football Conference, we're going to take a look at the next to last week of non-conference games. I'm Lewis Short, and we're also going to have highlights of select games to include the Southern Illinois Salukis and South Dakota State, and also Missouri State's first win of the season. We'll also talk about the top 25 matchup between the University of South Dakota against the number 10 North Dakota Fighting Hawks, who will be joining the Missouri Valley Football Conference in 2020. First of all, the, South- the Salukis of Southern Illinois hit a roadblock with rushing most of the night as the Southeast Missouri State Redhawks allowed just 99 yards rushing on 38 carries. The longest rush of the night was for 13 yards. The Salukis had one rushing touchdown. Sam Straub did, however, pass for 206 yards and four touchdowns. The Saluki defense was just a staunch, allowing Simo to rush for only 98 yards with the touchdown and their longest rush being 14 yards. The pass defense was effective as well as the Salukis held Simo to just 166 yards passing with one touchdown. Southeast Missouri also had a field goal early in the game to take a 3-0 lead after the, after the Salukis fumbled the ball on the first play of the first possession. Here is Mike Reese of the Southern Illinois Salukis Radio Network from Learfield. Two for three so far this year with a long of 45. This will be a 30-yard field goal. High snap, get it down, kick it up from 30 yards out, and he pushes it through. Here he is to throw. Blitz is on after him. Watson hit him, throwing intercepted at the 25 to the 30. It's Ryan Neal, cuts left to the 35-yard line, out to the 40, breaks a tackle, 45, far sideline, might go. Ryan Neal, 40, 35, 30. One man with an angle, he leaves. that man shoves him out of bounds. Hook post, and it's high grab by Leonard, that's a touchdown. He was the man in motion, Connor, and on a quick slant, he catches the ball going up in the air, and that's a touchdown for SIU. High bone backfield, Jalen Graham, then Hans Carmine, then Jonathan Mixon. Here's Mixon to the one, to the goal line, to the end zone. Touchdown, SIU. Straub directly under center from the 38. Play action, looking deep again, setting up, throwing deep up the middle. Open, James got a 10-5. Touchdown, SIU. Darrell James with the touchdown. The Salukis have scored 20 straight points. That's a 38-yard score, a beautiful pass from Sam Straub to Darrell James. And there's the snap, and they hand the ball off to him, and he's trying to get left. He does, and he scores for Southeast Missouri State, a three-yard touchdown run. Here he is to throw, looking right all the way. Quick slant, caught by Southern, 25 to the 20. Darrell James to the 15. He's to the 10. He's to the 5. Dive, he got it. Touchdown, Southern Illinois. Setting up, throwing it deep. Man has a step. Now overthrow it, intercepted. Jeremy Chin at the 40-yard line, and Southern will get another possession. And, Connor, both safeties have interceptions tonight. This well, time, Jeremy Chin. Th- th- this is two weeks in a row. Saluki fans need to come watch this kid play because I said it last week, range. He is like a center fielder. He covers so much ground so quickly. Straub off play action to throw. Plenty of time to the end zone for Barbell. Open, caught it over his shoulder for a touchdown in the near corner. Now he's hit. Now he throws open, caught it. Touchdown, Southeast Missouri. That was Mike Reese and Connor James on the Saluki Sports Radio Network by Learfield. As far as some of the team stats right now for Southern Illinois, they're scoring 45 points per game. The opponents are scoring just 10 per game. SIU has scored 90 points in two games, allowing only 20 points for their opponents. Rushing first downs, 19. Rushing uh, rushing for opponents, they've only given up 10 first downs. Passing. SIU's had 18 first downs on passing. 19 goes to their opponents. SIU's had eight penalties. Their opponents, seven. So that's 45 total first downs for SIU, 36 for their opponents. In rushing, SIU has rushed for 410 yards and their opponents for 202 yards. Uh, Yards lost, 26. Their opponents, 112. So the, uh, the defense has been staunch for Southern Illinois. Rushing attempts, 92. Their opponents average 64. The average per attempt for rushing, 4.2 yards. SIU is giving up 1.4 yards per attempt. Uh, 192 yards rushing per game, 45 for their opponents. Touchdowns. SIU has scored six rushing touchdowns, while their opponents have just scored one rushing touchdown. SIU's rushed for 384 yards total. Their opponents have rushed for 
90. For passing, Sam Straub has been the quarterback so far for Southern Illinois. Overall, for passing right now, SIU's completed 30 of 59 with two interceptions. Their opponents have completed 41 of 87 with four interceptions. Uh, average pass for SIU is 7.49 yards. Uh, average per game is 221 yards. They've scored seven passing touchdowns. They've had 442 yards total passing. Uh, total offense is 151. That's pretty much even for both teams. Average per play is five and a half yards. Average per game is 413 yards. Uh, total yards for SIU, 826 with 13 touchdowns. SIU has only given up two touchdowns, and that was against Southeast Missouri State. Their opponent two weeks ago did not score a touchdown at all. That was Mississippi Valley State. They scored one field goal for the game. Third down percentage. SIU is converting 45.16% of the time, while their opponents are converting just about 22% of the time. Fourth downs. SIU is 100% as far as fourth down conversions, while their opponents are 25%. Sack yardage. SIU's had 10 sacks for 76 yards. They quarterback for SIU, Sam Straub, has been sacked one time for nine yards. SIU wins the game 35-17 to to move to 2-0 on the season. They get their first road win since 2014. Okay, moving on to South Dakota State versus Drake. Let's just say that Drake did not have a good day. South Dakota State came out on fire. We're just going to let Terry Merriam of the Coyotes Radio Network on Learfield take the call. Kramer makes his call, claps his hands, one step drop, throws right side, and the pass is knocked away. Jordan Brown batted it onto the far sideline. Second and seven, two wide left and one to the right. Christian, a one step out of the gun, throws down the middle of the field, catch made inside the 30, and spinning through a tackle down to the 15 yard line is Marquise Lewis. Goddard aligns as a wing back to the right. Christian in the shotgun will do a shovel pass to Goddard, who will take it up the middle, and he'll jump over a man and reach the end zone for a South Dakota State touchdown. Good snap. White tried to get it off, and it was blocked back at the 40-yard line. Lorenzo Williams, the sophomore from here on, blocks the punt, and South Dakota State jumps on it. Lusher to Christian's left and behind him is the tailback, Mikey Daniel, who receives the handoff. First down and more up the middle as Daniel sprints inside the 10 to the Drake seven-yard line. First and goal inside the one. Isaac Wallace is behind Taryn Christian. He'll take the handoff and march into the end zone untouched for the ninth rushing touchdown of the junior out of Omaha's career. Takes the Otisorgi waist high snap, one step. He'll throw over the middle, catch made at midfield, bouncing off tackles and backing his way to the 41 yard line. The redshirt freshman, Kay Johnson. Christian in the pistol on first and goal. Fade left corner of the end zone for Jake Winicky, who jumps into the air and secures the catch inside the near boundary for a South Dakota State touchdown. Two receivers either side. Now Wallace in motion out of the backfield. Empty set for Christian. Drake brings five. Christian down the middle of the field for Wallace, who makes a tremendous adjustment and an athletic grab inside the two as he's down at the Drake one-yard line. He takes the snap. He will give it to Wallace, trying to run off the right side. Fought through a couple of tackles and into the end zone for a South Dakota State touchdown. Jacks nearly jumped across early, but get back. Kramer a play fake, a pump fake, he'll throw into traffic, ball deflected, and it's intercepted by Logan Backus, who is tackled at the 45-yard line. That ball batted around three or four different times. Christian in the shotgun, fake to Lusher. He'll pitch it to Jake Winicky on an end around to the right side. He has some room to the 40, right sideline 30. He's inside the 20, and he's out of bounds near the Drake 10. First and goal at the 10, Christian to throw, nothing doing. He'll run up the middle to the 5 and power his way into the end zone. Touchdown, South Dakota State. This end over end kick will be corralled at the 5 yard line. Returnable for Kay Johnson, out across the 20, right seam 30. He's to the 40, midfield, angling left seam 40, 30, 20, 10, pay dirt. Touchdown, Cade Johnson. 95 yards. The pistol Daniel behind him. 
fake of the handoff. Douglas will throw a bullet to the right side. Catch made at midfield by Wildy, and the Brandon Valley product works his way to the 35 of the Bulldogs. A gain of 29 yards. In motion right to left comes Johnson. Instead, it's Daniel up the middle for a first down for a touchdown. Easy work for Mikey Daniel as he runs it straight up the middle for an 11-yard scoring scamper. Fourth down, Kramer to throw. Pressured, and he'll be sacked back at the 42-yard line. Ridden down by Tristan Lyseth, the sophomore out of Hayton. Chase Vinatieri off the Brady Hale hold. This would be 51 yards. Good snap, good hold, end over end kick. It's long enough, it's good. Chase Vinatieri from 51 yards out. South Dakota State runs its record to 3-0 and with a 51-10 victory in the 51st Beef Bowl. And South Dakota State turns back the Bulldogs of Drake University. That was Tyler Merriam of the Coyotes Radio Network from Learfield. Now, let's take a look at some of the stats on that game because some of these stats are just amazing. South Dakota State had 125 yards rushing on 23 attempts. Their largest rush was 35 yards. They were 21 of 35 for 252 yards passing with two touchdowns. Their longest was 34 yards. They had a kick return. They had three kick returns for 115 yards with one touchdown on a return on kickoff for 95 yards. They also had received five punts Running those back, 74 yards, the longest was 33 for a total offense of 377 yards. They're already at 1,420, uh, 1,412 yards total offense in three games. Their opponents are at 1,074 yards total offense for the games. Uh, the average rush for in with three games. Their average rushing is 6.2 yards of rush. Their average catch is 12.3 catches or 12.3 yards per catch. The passing efficiency is 156.01. The kick return average is 31 yards. The punting average, punt return average is 10 yards. All purpose average yards per game, 571.3 yards. Total offense average per game. 470.7. Once again, for the final score for Drake versus South Dakota State was 51-10. to 10. The highlights once again come from Tyler Merriam of the Coyotes Radio Network by Learfield Sports. Now then, taking a look at the Missouri State game versus Murray State. Missouri State going for their first win of the season. And they get off to a pretty good start. Murray State scores first at the 10:59 mark or 10:51 mark of the first quarter, scoring three on the field goal. And then Murray State scores once again with a minute 49 on a touchdown pass, Corey Newble to Gabriel Vicente to make the score 10 to nothing. That's when Missouri State comes back and starts. Starts to make a comeback. Um, Malik Earl scores from 35 yards out. And we're going to have some of the calls right here from Art Haynes of the Missouri State Bears Radio Network from Learfield. Low snap gathered in by Huslick. He will float it for the end zone. Back shoulder catch. Touchdown. Nick Masoner. And his defender was on the inside shoulder. And Masoner adjusted his body and caught the ball on the opposite side and crosses in front of the pylon. Peyton Huslig, the quarterback, he will fake, steps up in the pocket, looking long for the end zone, deep post, has a man, touchdown! Malik Earl burned double coverage, and the ball fell out of the sky from Huslig for a touchdown in the north end zone. Fake to Mason, same thing, quarterback option, going to keep to the five, and touchdown! <laughs> Huslig takes it all the way. From 10 yards out, he runs it in. And the Bears have a two-score lead over Murray State. Crowder is the eye back. Crowder gets the call, trying to bounce it. 
He's to the one. He's fighting for the end zone. He got it. Touchdown. That was Art Haynes on the Missouri State Radio Network, powered by Learfield. Missouri State comes back from a 10-0 deficit to win their first game of the season for Missouri State. On first downs, they had 17 first downs, nine of them coming from rushing, seven from passing, and one from a penalty. Uh, Net yards rushing was 164 yards. Rushing attempts, there was 36 rushing attempts by Missouri State. They averaged 4.6 yards per rush. They had two rushing touchdowns. Uh, yards gained rushing, 192 yards rushing. Uh, they also lost 28 yards rushing. Uh, net yards passing was 196 yards. They were 18 of 30 with two interceptions. Average pass was 6.5 per attempt. Average per completion was 10.9. Uh, passing touchdowns, two. Total offensive yards. Uh, Murray State had 273 yards. Uh, Missouri State had 360. Uh, Missouri State lost or fumbled once, but they got that back. Uh, penalty penalties. There were six penalties for 54 yards against Murray State. Missouri State had six penalties for 51 yards. Once again, Missouri State wins their first game of the season. 28 to 21 over Murray State's Racers. The biggest game in the Missouri Valley Football Conference this week was the number 10 North Dakota Fighting Hawks taking on number 23 South Dakota in Vermilion, South Dakota. North Dakota did not have a good game, but South Dakota did. North Dakota had 11 first downs compared to South Dakota's 33. Rushing, net rushing yards, it was North Dakota with 30 carries for 102 yards, while South Dakota had 59 carries for 285 yards. North, or, yes, North Dakota was 12 of 25 for passing with no interceptions, while South Dakota was 23 of 30 with no interceptions. Total offensive plays and yardage, 55 total plays for North Dakota, while South Dakota had 89 plays for 575 yards. Um, let's see. North Dakota, um, John Santiago was had 12 carries for 85 yards. Brady Oliveria had four carries for nine yards. Uh, passing North Dakota's quarterback, Keaton Sedsbrud, was 11 of 22 for 133 yards, while... South Dakota's Chris Driveler was 23 of 30 for 290 yards. Brad Heidelbaugh of North Dakota also had one pass for, he was one of three for 22 yards. Uh, receiving for North Dakota, it was t- Travis Toivonen, five receptions for 53 yards. And the leader for South Dakota, Dakota was, let's see here, uh, South Dakota's leader was Levi Falk, seven receptions for 77 yards. Shamar Jackson had four receptions for 97 yards. Uh, no interceptions in the game. Uh, North Dakota or South Dakota, either one had a fumble. Taking a look at the rest of the Missouri Valley football scoreboard, finishing out the scoreboard for week three. It was Youngstown State all over Central Connecticut State University, 59-9. It was Northern Iowa falling to Southern Utah, 24-21. Northern Iowa is now 1-2. Illinois State 2-0 now over Eastern Illinois, 44-13. Uh, let's see. Also, Indiana State loses a nail biter on a blocked field goal in the last play of the game, falling to Liberty Flames, forty-two to forty-one. Let's go ahead and take a look at the top twenty-five that came out for this week. The number one team is still James Madison. However, 
in the FCS coaches poll, there are seven Missouri Valley Conference teams in the top 25. And we'll go in the order of that. Number two is North Dakota State. Number four, South Dakota State. Number five, Youngstown State. Number 12, Illinois State. Number 14, South Dakota. They moved up from number 23. Uh, Let's see. Uh, Number 21 is the Western Illinois Leathernecks. And I skipped over number 19, which, no, number 19 is not in the conference yet. They will be in the conference in 2020, and that is North Dakota. So we know what we can expect when they come in. They look like they're going to be another top-tier team for the Missouri Valley. Uh, Number 24 is Northern Iowa. So the teams in the top 25 are North Dakota State, South Dakota State, Youngstown State. Then we have Illinois State. We have South Dakota. We have Western Illinois. We also have Northern Iowa. In the stats top 25, there are six teams from the Missouri Valley, and James Madison is the number one team still from the Colonial Athletic Association. But North North Dakota State is number two, and they are receiving first place votes in the stats top 25. Number four is South Dakota State. Uh, Let's see. Number 13 is South Dakota. Number 14, Illinois State. Number number 19 is Western Illinois. And one team did fall out, and that was Northern Iowa. However, Southern Illinois did receive votes in the stats top 25. They just have not cracked that field yet. So there's six teams in the stats top 25. And seven for the FCS coaches poll. It's time now for our pick of the game of the week. And I'm going to choose the Southern Illinois Memphis game because that is an FCS school against an FBS school. And there is quite a bit of interest in that game as far as what is going to happen there. Uh, Southern Illinois is going to try to knock off the Memphis Tigers in in Memphis at the Liberty Bowl. Southern Illinois has only won one road game in since 2014, and that was last week against Southeast Missouri State. Um, Sam Straub is completing 51% of his passes for 397 yards and six touchdowns and one interception. Um, Straub and backup quarterback, Tanner Hearn have combined for seven touchdown passes this season. Uh, Darrell James and Connor Iowima have combined for 290 yards receiving and three touchdowns, while Raphael Leonard has five receptions. Um, This Southern Illinois Greyhound game is averaging 192 yards per contest, and Daquan Isom leads the way with 126 yards and one touchdown. Uh, Southern Illinois is allowing only 10 points defensively, and only allowing 289 yards per game. Ryan Neal leads the Southern Illinois Salukis with 12 tackles. Anthony Knighton has three sacks, and Jeremy Chin has two interceptions. The Memphis Tigers are looking to go 3-0 after beating the Bruins of UCLA last week. Uh, They have won seven of their last nine home games. Riley Ferguson, who threw for six touchdowns against the Bruins of UCLA, is completing 52.4% of his passes for 495 yards, and he has six touchdowns and two interceptions. Uh, Ferguson has three three or more touchdown passes in six of his last eight games. Anthony Miller and Joy Magnifico have combined for 311 yards receiving and three touchdowns, while Tony Pollard has four receptions. The Memphis Tigers on the ground are averaging 240.5 yards per contest, and Daryl Henderson leads the way with 274 yards and two touchdowns. Memphis is, however, allowing 37 points and 529 yards per game. Curtis Aikens leads the Memphis Tigers with with 16 tackles, while O'Brien Goodson has one sack and Austin Hall has one interception. The Salukis can... Score and put up impressive offensive numbers, but it's done nothing on the road dating back to the last season 
That includes losing to a very bad Florida Atlantic team in last year's season opener. The Salukis do, however, have momentum going in their way as they did win their last road game against Southeast Missouri State. Other games coming up in the Missouri Valley Football Conference this week will be Western Illinois traveling to Coastal Carolina. Illinois State travels to Missouri State to open the conference season. Robert Morris travels to North Dakota State. There's only three games on the schedule this week. The rest of the teams have a bye week. And we will see you next week.